What's up, everybody? Dr. Vong. Today, I want to talk about how I keep myself healthy during coronavirus. We're going to talk about masks. We're going to talk about hand washing and gels and do these really work? Which ones should you wear, not wear? We're going to talk about my rapid test, the, you know, one step rapid test, testing yourself, things I do to stay healthy. So if you're watching this, if you think this is going to be useful, please hit share. Let's get some people in here. Hey, 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 where are you calling from? What's up, Fair on YouTube? Jenny Kit Sarah's watching on YouTube. Heather Rochelle's working on my lungs and getting my BMI down. That's exactly right. The number one risk factor for poor outcomes is obesity. So you got to get the weight down. What's up, Michelle O'Connor? Hey, 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 what's up? MK's watching on YouTube. So comment, hit share for me. I'm Dr. Duck Vong. I'm a world famous bariatric surgeon. Here are my diploma from med school, and this is my surgical residency diploma. I graduated from general surgery in 2005, um, became famous for bariatric surgery, written 13 books. What's up, Pinar? Always watching. How are you guys doing? Donna Harpool, how you been? What's up? From New York fucking city. What's up? Georgia in the house. Hi, Lindsay. Matthew, good afternoon, brother. I like that profile pic. That looks good. John Clark is in uh, Indiana. Oh, now here, I don't hear they come. Nancy Bishop, what's up? Joan Mueller, Giovanni from Scotland. See, I told you I was internationally famous. Thank you guys for hitting share. Appreciate it. I'm going to talk about masks today. I'm going to talk about hand sanitizers. I'm going to talk about testing, home testing, self testing. That's all available. I'm also going to talk a little bit about my challenge, not too much. So uh, once a month, I open up my weight loss challenge. So it's weightlosschallenge.com. You can check that out there below and, um, and uh, get in on that. Today's the final day to join the challenge. The challenge has specific tasks for you to do. It's got um, uh, a daily Facebook Live from me in my secret group. Listen, I've been talking in my secret group about coronavirus since this whole shit started back in, um, in mid 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 March and uh, April. So we've been gearing up for this. We know what type of masks to wear. We know about hand sanit. We know about social distancing. We listen to um, to um, you know, to real news, to the real science. Okay. So we're going to answer all this question. What's up? What's up, Norway? That's not true. You can wear a mask forever all day long. I did. Uh, Marcy best. Oh, look at that photo, Marcy. Look at you go girl. Best decision ever. Right. We're going to take your questions to Alfred. Um, it's big droplets for right now. What's up, Lee? She's in the challenge. Uh, yin yang's in the challenge. Oh, Tracy, hope to uh, hope to join next month. Why not this month? Tonight is the last day. Dustin, what's up, brother? Love how honest you are and blunt. Thank you. Not too much cussing today. Join us. Today's the last day for the challenge. So get to weightlosschallenge.com and uh, let's get rolling here. 78 years old. Whoa. That's right. Be careful. Be careful. Um, life changing. Thank you. Weightlosschallenge.com. So let's talk about it. Hit share for me. Thank you guys. Um, not your friend share. Hit the share button, the like button. Um, hey, look at that. Susan Campbell, September newbie. She just joined the challenge for September. We're going to talk about how we stay healthy, right? We're going to talk about that. Jennifer, what's up? How are you doing? Danny from Nebraska. Awesome. Sherry's from New Hampshire. Thank you for watching. Donna. Thank you for hitting share, Don. I appreciate that. All right. Afternoon, Tess. See you in group. Palm Desert. In the weight loss challenge, we have weekly group meetings too. June Vang, have a surgery. You've been blessed me. We'll be joining your challenge soon after surgery. Join it before surgery, June. I promise you. You got to get the the mindset ready. <laughs> Best days ever, man. I say fuck up. What's up, fucko? What's up? I got to stop cussing because people need to hear this good message, right? Hey, Sandra. How's it going? Carol, good afternoon. Join the challenge. Change your life. Yes, it will. I know. We're going to talk about how to properly wear your mask, too. That sounds good. Um, Tampa, Florida is in the house. Look at this. Jennifer, 
Lost 24 pounds since mid-June. Awesome, Jennifer. Way to go. Group is the challenge on crack. Yes, it is. Nope. You can join now, June. Today's the last day. So check out weightlosschallenge.com. Nope, nope. We got a lot of non-surgical people. We got people pre-op, post-op, but we have a lot that are non-surgical. Go, Jacqueline, go to weightlosschallenge.com, weightlosschallenge.com. We're in the five minutes mark, so let's get going. How can you join with? Yes, we have lots of people, Elaine, who are not in, not having surgery. They're actually, um, <laughs> you'd be surprised, man. A lot of people still get bugged by that because they, they're, not, they're not worried about dying from COVID, but they're worried about a four letter word. It's pretty crazy. Life changing. All right, let's roll. Oh, Sergio, my man, Sergio, back again, Sergio. What's up, brother? Thank you for always watching. Okay, so let's go. My nose is itchy. Sorry, let me scratch. I have allergies. <clears throat> I'm probably going to download this one and save it. So let me give me a second here and put it up on YouTube because I think it'll be I think it'll be helpful. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Jock Vong. I'm a world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. I'm actually retired, retired two years, but I have a, a big um, social media following for the obesity bariatric population. So why am I talking about coronavirus, COVID? It's because the number one risk factor for poor outcomes with COVID is not age, it's actually morbid obesity, right? And so that's my following, that's why I do this. You don't have to be obese to listen to me, but that's just my following. And today I'm gonna to talk about how I keep myself healthy. We're gonna talk about masks, we're gonna talk about gels, and I'm gonna talk about this bad boy. Who knows what this is? Yes, that's right, a COVID test. It gives you results in 10 to 15 minutes, all right? So let's talk about the first thing real quick here. Do masks work? Uh, and the answer is the right mask works. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. What's what's necessary, what's not necessary. All right, um, so if you are, first of all, you don't need these N95 masks, right? You don't need these N95 masks. You, um, unless you work in a high, high risk area, like a hospital, ICU patients, dental office, et cetera, um, you don't need it. And you shouldn't be buying it off the internet. You should not buy, be buying N95 masks off the internet. Why not? Because you actually have to get fitted for them and, and you actually um, go into a room uh, or you in a hood and they spray um, a chemical that you can taste and you have to tell them if you taste it or not. So it's actually fitted and tested for um, to, to make sure it's really working well. And um, when I got fitted for mine back in med school, um, you, uh, you actually have to shave your goatee. You can't have fate. You're not supposed to have facial hair. So you got all these people wearing N95 masks with these big beards and stuff going out in public and it's not any better. You don't need it. Right? So save those masks for the healthcare providers. They need them more. Um, don't, don't bother wearing one. If you are in love with Dr. Vong, I'm high risk. Okay. Well, if you're high risk, then, um, you know, a, a, a poorly fitting N95 mask is not going to be any better. So what does work, right? What does work? The right mask works. Okay. Let me tell you what does not work. What you should not have is one of these. This is a single ply. Now look, I'm going to hold it up and you can, it's single ply. You can actually see through it. You know, you might, you can, probably see see that you can see my mouth right can y'all see that this is a single ply this is one of my early ones uh that we got when this whole thing started uh um single ply cloth material is almost useless it's really really not not good what you do want what do you want you do oh wait one more thing you don't want you know the neck ones that people wear the ones that you just slide over your head and sits around your neck and then they pull it up and it's a real thin, it almost looks like a workout material, like a Lycra. Um, those are actually worse, worse than not wearing a mask. So if you know the ones I'm talking about, that's where um, like it fits over your neck. 
um, not don't wear those. Those are useless. Uh, Duke University did a study on masks where they actually put people in, had them say the same phrase. They they put them in this hood and they could they could see the spread and they know which mask works. So single ply does not work. That little sleeve that you wear over your, your neck, it's like a lycra material, uh, spandex material. Those don't work. So don't use those. What does work? This is fine. So uh, this is one of these everyday ones that go over your ears like that, right? These will be perfect. You can fit them down around your nose because yes, you get a little bit of spray here if you really, really try to force it. But for the most part, it, it works really, really well. And um, it, um, it's actually quite comfortable. You can breathe, you can wear these all day long. There's not, don't listen to like it, you can only wear for an hour, you know, dude, I went a long time wearing surgical masks. The, one, the ones that you actually tie, that the surgeons wear are even thicker than these. And I've been, you know, especially during residency, I would be in OR cases for hours, you know, med student. I was in this one liver case for freaking like five, six hours with a surgical mask on no issues there, right? So don't believe the people uh, that says you can't wear masks. There's no fucking carbon dioxide poisoning. That's stupid. You're not going to get carbon dioxide poisoning from this and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, th so these are, are fine. They're relatively cheap. They're very che They're cheaper than the cloth ones and they work just fine. The Duke study showed that these are great. And if you're like me and you're a gardening junkie and you go to places like Home Depot and Lowe's, a lot of times when you're walking in, they will actually have a box of these masks for people to just wear, to just grab. Don't be a dickhead. Don't grab all of them, but just grab one or two. And that way you can use it. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about here in a second about having fomites and viruses on the mask and stuff like that. Now, this is a, a mask that you see a lot. This one was actually sent to me by, by a uh, follower, which I appreciate fits very comfortably has a cute little logo on it here. So you've seen these sort of masks, right? Now this is probably the, the ones that you want to wear. It's a, see, it's a two ply. So it's got two ply, um, mask. It's a, a cloth material, cotton two ply. It works perfectly fine. In fact, if you're in a bind and you don't have a mask, you can actually just take a t-shirt, just this regular cotton t-shirt. This is perfect. Just to see if I grab it here, you guys see what I'm doing here and I fold it up. It be, let me see. It becomes a two ply. It becomes a two ply mask. So don't do this. This is a one ply mask. Is this helpful? This is a one ply mask. This is what people do. You want a two ply mask. So you kind of grab it, grab it from your boobies <laughs> right above your nipples. And now it becomes a two ply. See that? If you do like that and just walking around just real quick. If you, if you, Oh shit, I forgot my mask. Just cover up like this and you'll be just fine. This works fine. They actually studied this too. So doing a two ply t-shirt and you can actually hear, you hear the difference in my voice. It muffles. Did, did not put, put a one in the comment section. If you can tell the difference between this and this, like it really muffles the voice, right? So if it's muffling my voice, then that means that if I sneeze or droplets or anything like that, it's really going to capture it. Does that make sense? All right. So, um, same thing here. Put this on. You can hear a little difference, not big. I'll oh, check that out. See, look at all these ones coming up, right? So you can totally, totally hear the difference there with the t-shirt, right? Easy, simple, right? Now, some of these also, you can buy some of these. This one doesn't have it, but you can buy little filters. I had one in the laundry room. I forgot. And you can slip like a little extra protection filter in here. Those are fine too, but you don't have to have it. You can just one of these or one of these, you can get these free, a box of these or like, you know, five bucks, very affordable. Um, so that's really, that's all that's necessary. Now the big question become and this one again, single ply do not use. And that little stocking that goes over your neck, that's like that lycra workout material. Don't use those. That one's the worst one at all of all of them. Um, it's worse than not having a mask. Okay. 
So then there comes the question about how often can you reuse them? Um, what has to happen? Can you wash them, et cetera? So here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's tip number two. Um, coronavirus is really is spread through um, people, through uh, people, not materials. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, when this all started, we were really concerned about fomites, right? Fomites is any surface that contains uh, bacteria virus, right? So actually, a droplet is a fomite because it's air, it's you know saliva and, and mucus and stuff like that but that has virus in it. But the the fear was that if you sneeze on a surface table, uh, that the virus would be there and might be there for up to three to six to ten. To two, you guys remember these reports, right? Fifteen hours. And someone would come along and touch that table surface and now and then wipe their nose and now they caught coronavirus so it turns out now that we've studied it no this is coronavirus is more spread from person to person through droplets so either coughing sneezing talking really closely or obvious things like singing oh, you know blah, and you're singing you're yelling you're protesting right like yelling that's the that those are the things that are going to cause the spread so less likely to catch it off surfaces so you don't really need you can wash your vegetables if you want remember who remembers this back in like april we were washing our vegetables we were spraying down our amazon boxes don't need to really do that because it's not really how it's transmitted we're pretty sure about that now so don't worry about so much about fomites I reuse my masks. Some people are like, but what's the point? Now you walked around and it's protecting. And, and now you got, now obviously if I'm wearing a mask and someone around me like sneezes or I sneeze into my mask, I'm not gonna reuse that mask, that's nasty. You're gonna throw that away, right? Um, but these are, all, oh, I lie. Okay, so I can't slip a little filter in there. So I would just take this and just throw it in the washing machine just fine you know um and you can have several of these and you can alternate you can wash the laundry load reuse it's no big deal right so science as as data keeps coming in we learn more and more i actually have several of these in my my car and um and i put them in the side i'll reuse one of these maybe three or four times um and then uh alternate i'll wash these etc right that's, that's really the download with masks. And yes, masks work. Masks work, right? A lot of people are like, ah, early on, you know, the size of the virus is itty bitty and the pores on the mask are huge. No, you're stopping droplets, right? Yes, I know the pores of the masks are, are bigger than the coronavirus itself, but it's not, the coronavirus isn't floating in the air by itself. It is stuck to droplets from your freaking pie hole, you're singing and protesting and yelling and sneezing, and that's what you got to stop, right? And the reason why they work is because we know now that a lot of people can be asymptomatic, which means they don't have symptoms, and still be infectious, still can spread the virus before they themselves start getting symptoms. So then they get symptoms and they go, oh shit, now I got to go get tested, and then they have to call their buddies and friends and tell them that they were exposed which takes me to the second way I take care of myself, which is I, dude, you, how easy is this? You gotta have some sort of hand sanitizer all the time. My car has a big bottle, I've got little bottles, I got pocket size ones. And every time I go in and out and literally just put some stuff on there, watch this now, this is a little bit different. A lot of people don't do this, but as surgeons, we know to do this. You take your fingernails into that pool and do that. Take your finger, put some more on this side for you. Okay. Take your fingernails, guys, one more time, <clears throat> into that pool and really wash your fingernails and really get it between your fingers. Okay. That's super important. It's your fingertips, right? A lot of people kind of do their palms. Well, I mean, you're not really doing this, right? You're really more touching it with your fingertips. You got to really disinfect the fingers. It's not the hand. I know we, I know we call it a hand sanitizer. 
that's really the fingers that you're really wanting to do. Does that make sense? So I carry these everywhere. I have them in my car. I have them in my pockets. Um, my girlfriend has it in her purse. Um, so get the tips of your fingers clean. That's really important, which as you know, then takes you to hand washing. When you wash your hands, you want to do the same thing. A lot of people wash. <laughs> have you ever been to a men's bathroom? And you've seen, first of all, half the men don't fucking wash their hands after they use the bathroom. But the ones who do barely just get it wet and then they're out of there. Um, when For coronavirus, when you wash your hands, you want to get a good lather. You want to do the same thing, which is to get your fingernails all up in there, lathered up your fingers. And you want to wash for 20 seconds, which is about singing happy birthday twice. Happy birthday to you. Oh, it's my birthday next month. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dr. Vong. Happy birthday to you. And you sing that twice, 20 seconds, and um, then you rinse and, and, and that's the end. Okay, so when I'm going out, what, Dr. Vong, what if I'm going out? So pretend I'm, and I'll, I can shoot a video later, but let's say I'm going grocery shopping and I come in, right? I load up my groceries. I get into my car. I don't take off my mask. I get into my car. I do my hand sanitizer, do my nails, do this, do this. Okay. I got a lot of lotion. I have a lot of hand sanitizer in my hand. So by the time I'm done with this, my hands are still wet. I then clean off my steering wheel. I then clean off my door handle, like, like the inside, not the outside. I take my hand, I clean off the door handle like that. And um, sometimes if I know I've had my cell phone out, if I've been doing something, I will actually take a little bit of it and rub it around my phone, sanitize my phone as much as possible, right? Because remember, it's not going to, you're not really going to catch it on surfaces, but better safe than sorry. After I've done that, then I take off my mask. Then I take off my mask and then I do whatever I want. <laughs> you know, um, I try not to touch my face uh, when I'm in my car. I try to get, I try to wait and I'm not perfect. Try to wait to get home and then wash my hands in the sink, which takes me to the next thing is when you get home, tip number three is wash hands every time at home so when you go in and out of your home where there's groceries it's picking up kids it's picking up dinner whatever you're doing you want to wash your hands every time you come home right go straight to the kitchen go straight to the bathroom right um, wash your hands every single time that's what I do go wash your hands every time I come um, now, obviously not if I'm going for my front yard or my backyard or whatever, but if I'm going out, if I'm getting groceries, if I'm going to the doctor's appointment, if I'm doing anything that involves touching rails, shopping carts, any of that stuff, I wash my hands. Wash my hands when you get home, okay? That'll keep you nice and safe, right? Um, then obviously you got the usual lose the weight, you know, like, you know, okay. Now, last thing I want to talk about is, is, um, is this, which is testing. Um, we need better and more rapid testing. Despite what our politicians say, are you want more testing? Um, our numbers are not high because we test. I mean, it's true, but all that says is that is that it's in the community. It's out there, right? It's like sitting there saying, you know, if if we didn't test, our numbers wouldn't be as high. That's really stupid. That's that's like saying, as long as I don't turn on the lights, we don't have roaches, right? As long as I don't turn on the lights, honey, we don't have roaches. You don't have to be afraid. <laughs> what? No, you want to turn on the lights, i.e. testing, so you know how many roaches you got, i.e. virus or positive cases. That way you can fucking treat and kill those bugs and, you know, in this thing. So you want to test. Problem is, problem is that, um, you know, you guys have all seen the pictures. You know, when they had testing facilities, people would have to wait six hours in a car. One lady from a nursing home died while waiting for a test, which was kind of ironic. 
people getting hot, people ran out of gases, people had bathroom accidents, all sorts of stuff because they were waiting. So God bless them. They they were doing the best they can. They just drive through testing. Then they stick this swab up your nose. You Got to go way up in here, way up in here, not here. Can't do this. Can't can't do that. Got to go way up in there. Right. And then it takes 10 to 14 days to get your test back. You guys understand that testing results that take 10 to 14 days is useless. You understand that, right? It's completely useless because you could have been re-exposed. You could have you know, you know, given it to a lot of other people. What we really need is more rapid, more accurate testing, right? So what I like to do, um, is talk about the rapid testing. So this company reached out to me and says, hey, we have this rapid test that um, will give you results, that will give you results in 10 to 15 minutes. And um, we're selling it to businesses and you're doing coronavirus stuff and, and it's really good. And so I looked at it and um, first of all, let me tell you guys something real quick. There are no FDA approved coronavirus tests. You understand that, right? The, the nasal swab they're shoving up your nose. None, there is no FDA approved coronavirus test. What they have is the EUA, the Emergency Use Act. Okay, so uh, tip number five is uh, testing is under the EUA. So um, there is no coronavirus approved test. Testing is under the EUA. Uh, emergency use act so this test is under emergency use act okay um and and this company sells it sells it to other businesses because their goal is to uh as the owner of the business let's say you have a warehouse meat processing plant etc and let's say you have a hundred employees well you're in test the employees and the ones that are positive you isolate them you send them home and you retest them if they need to be retested once they're isolated and negative. And that way you can keep your restaurant open or your or your warehouse open or your you know sewing fabric clothing store open, right? You need rapid testing. So the company focused on, on businesses. Well, I get it and I tested it. I tested myself. Check out, I don't know if y'all saw the video, but I have an older daughter who's 14, lives with her mom here in Houston. And her mom is high risk, paranoid, bad asthmatic, and um, and starting in March, I couldn't see my daughter. And if she came, she wanted us to be outside. She wanted, you know, we couldn't touch. I didn't, couldn't hug my daughter. So I got the rapid test, and um, I tested myself negative. Tested her, she was negative, and we hugged. And it was the first time we hugged since March. This is crazy. So then I call the company back, and I said. Why don't y'all promote this as a like for home use, a home test, right? And here's who wants to know the answer. Who wants to know why they can't sell this as a home test? Anyone want to know the answer? Put a one in the comment section if you want to know the answer to why this is a home. The why they are why you guys don't have this. This is what the White House is using, right? Or something like this. They're not nasal swabbing people in the freaking White House promise you right so why is this not available to you guys right and here's the answer the answer is um for whatever reason the powers that be require or at least told this company that it has to be administered by a healthcare professional not a doctor a healthcare professional so it could be a nurse that you train so it could be a medical assistant right so what this company does is they'll they'll do a contract with a business. They'll go out there and let's say they have a hundred employees. So they'll they actually hire a nurse who goes out there and will test each employee. They'll you know they'll just come in slots, socially distancing whatever, and they get results back in ten minutes. So the company actually hires a nurse. So I'm sitting here thinking about it. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't help us. That doesn't help the general public. So they were, I said, why don't y'all sell this as a home test? And they said, we can't. And I said, 
what if I did? And they said, well, you're a doctor. You can do whatever you want. Now, I'm not practicing. I don't hold a medical license, but this is no different than if I was, um, if you went to see your doctor and you were a diabetic and the doctor never teaches you how to do your blood sugars. The doctor always says is, is, hey, go see my nurse or go to this other room and my MA or my nurse will teach you how to prick your finger and check your blood sugars, right? Comment if you're diabetic and that's exactly what happened. The doctor never showed you how to check your blood sugars. The nurse did, right? So it's just the same sort of political idea. Well, I had this idea because like, this should be home testing. And because now if you haven't seen your grandbaby, if you haven't seen your, your grandmother, if you haven't had friends over because you're worried, you can test each other and you have um, more confidence, then you can start hanging out. Now, first of all, let me ask you this question. The nasal swabs, the ones that y'all all did this for and stood in line for, how accurate are those? What's the accuracy? The nasal swabs are about 70% accurate, only 70% accurate. So, so nasal swabs testing is about 70% accurate. That's it. So, so it, what happens is that leads to conspiracy theories about the coronavirus, about the numbers, et cetera right his share of this is helpful by the way if you're finding this interesting because a lot of people think that nasal swabbing is end all be all no there's going to be a 30 percent that we miss right so nasal swab testing is only about 70 percent accurate well this test is an antibody test rapid antibody test rapid test how accurate do you think it is anyone want to guess okay so rapid tests are actually 95% accurate. So this test right here is 95% accurate. I don't have to stick anything up my nose. It's a pinprick and you don't even feel it. It doesn't even hurt, right? I'll come back, I'll show you guys later, okay? And you get results right away. And so I started thinking like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't, I, why wouldn't I do this? Well, you know, it's risky, it's legal. I'm like, no, it's no different. So I'm think, thinking in my head, I'm like, it's no different. So uh, if, if, if the nurse shows you how to check your blood sugars, all it is is you prick your finger right here. It, it's, it doesn't even hurt to prick your finger. You hardly even feel it. Let's open it. Who wants to see this? Let's open this. This is, this is um, Healgen. You can see the brand right there, Healgen one-step rapid test. You can go to the FDA website. It's on the Emergency Use Act, right? So it's approved. It's on the Emergency Use Act. I'm going to open it. Drum, drum roll. Give me drum roll, somebody. Open that up. Pull it out. Here it is. This is it. Can y'all see that? Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Okay. And it tests your antibody. This is an actual antibody test. Okay. Um, you put the blood in this top circle, the top square, and you put the buffer reagent here, two drops of buffer reagent in the bottom, in the circle. And it pulls up and it separates and you read it. It's like a pregnancy test. It gives you a line uh, for IgG and another line for IgM. IgM means you're actively infected means you are positive and you're contagious and you need to go and isolate. IgG means that you were infected in the past and now have antibodies. And because it's a blood test, it's much more accurate. Why? Because eh, this, you could told, you, you might not shove it up far enough. You got to get way back here, ah, into your mouth. You got to get way back there. And you might have it up in there but whoever's doing the test might miss it. You might miss it, might miss it, and then it shows up as a false negative. Does that make sense what I'm saying? But with this test, where did I put it? With this test, it's in your body, it's in your blood. Now, every test, doesn't matter which test you use, the nasal swab or this, there's a three-day period from infection, exposure. There's three days, it takes that long for your body to create antibodies or to have enough viral culture that, that it will culture out, 
right? That they can, they can detect it. So there's a three day window from exposure. Problem is you don't know when you're exposed. So really you got to test yourself repeatedly if you really want to stay healthy. So I got these tests. I tested out my daughter negative. I finally got to hug her for the first time since March, tested my girlfriend, uh, tested my, um, my neighbor and his wife who actually had it retested her. She's negative and he's negative. And the reason why I tested my neighbor is because they have a seven year old daughter and I have a four year old daughter. I don't test young kids. There's no, there's no need to test young kids. And, and, um, and they play together. So now I have my little pod, my neighbor, uh, and we babysit each other for each other. We help out, we have dinners together cause we're all tested negative. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And none of us have symptoms, right? And um, that opens up your circle, right? If you want to do some homeschooling, you need some rapid tests because what you can do as a side business is you can say, hey, I'm going to teach five kids. I'm just going to test all the parents and here's my fee. And now you know with better security that everybody, at least in that pod, it's called a pod, is negative. Does that make sense? Let's say you haven't seen your grandmother since March. You just literally prick your finger, drop it in there, drives towards, let's say grandmother lives 15 minutes away, drive to grandmother. And by the time you get there, you'll have the result and say, look, I just tested. I'm negative. Let's test you. Right? Let's test you. Grandma's like, I've been, I've been, I haven't even left the house. So I have to be negative. Let's just test you. So now we know. Now, once you test, guess what? If, you, if everybody tested negative, would you have to social distance? Yes or no? Would you have to wear a face mask? Yes or no? No. This is what we need. We need more rapid testing. We don't need bullshit. So if you rapid test, you don't have to all do all this stuff. So some of y'all saw pictures of me uh, a couple of weeks ago at the middle of August. I went on a two week camping trip with my family all through Colorado and Wyoming and stuff like that. How could I do that? Well, one, I was going through areas where they had very little coronavirus. So uh, we were at, like at Ornay, which had zero cases. We went through Grand Junction, which only had like 30 cases that uh, whole week. We left Houston, which was having 1,700 cases a day. Went to Jackson Hole, where a breakout for them was they had 30 cases one time. Um, and very, very little. Uh, that was way back when. So one, I went to areas that did not have a lot of coronavirus. Two, I tested everybody. So we went and vis visited our friend, my friend Bob, who you'll see on the website once I get the website done. And, um, and I tested him. He's negative. I tested his wife. She's actually an uh, MRI tech, so she works in the hospital field. She, they tested her uh, a couple of weeks prior, and she tested negative. I retested her negative. I tested both of his, uh, his uh, in-laws, his, his parents, um, his wife's parents, um, they both tested negative. Um, I test, oh, here's an important one. I tested their nanny. They have a nanny who comes over and takes care, helps them take care of their couple kids, clean the house a little bit, meal, cook meals, you know, they both work. And I tested the nanny and I tested her 16, 16 year old son, 15 year old son, 15 year old son who wanted to go hang out with his friends, right? And now if you test your teenager and you ask them to test every, their little pod, dude, you feel much better, don't you? Right, does that make sense? So what we need is rapid testing. We don't need bullshit. We don't need propaganda. We don't need conspiracy theories. We need to get back to a new normalcy. Loved ones, we are social creatures. We're meant to, to, um, we're meant to um, hug and talk and socialize, right? So uh, I'm putting together these kits. Um, it's going to have, let me see. I don't have, so I don't, uh, I don't have one to show you, but my website's almost done. Ow, did y'all see that? My diploma just whacked me. Maybe that's a sign. I have to edit that part out. Maybe that's a sign. I bumped it with my chair. I bumped it with my chair. Okay. So uh, you're going to get uh, a lance. That's how you prick your finger. You're going to get the test. You're going to get a solution, a buffer solution. 
It's all going to come in a little Ziploc bag. Uh, it's going to look like this here. It's going to come with um, a Band-Aid. It's going to come with uh, an alcohol swab. It's going to come with a pair of gloves, right? And it's going to come with your kit, your test, and it's going to come with instructions. It's going to come with paper instructions and on my website. It's going to have, I'm going to do videos of um, me showing you how to do the test um, and testimonials from people who I've tested. And uh, I have I already have a video testing my neighbor. So you basically going to prick your finger and drop it in there and test. Now, here's a disclaimer. This is not meant to give you a approval, like a travel certificate to prove you can go to Mexico or Europe. This is not what it's for. It's not going to be a return to work. Your business, your company have their own protocols. They're going to have their own testing. They're going to want you to do improve, et cetera. But what this does is it gives you confidence. Now, just like a pregnancy test that you would do at home, what do, what do you do if you get a negative? You know, you go, woohoo, I'm negative. <laughs> or you go, oh, darn, honey, we're going to have to try again next month. That's also a bad thing. Um, and uh, But if it's positive, if your pregnancy test is positive, what do you do? You got to call your doctor. Say, hey, I'm pregnant. So then you go see your doctor. And what do they do? They give you another test, right? Usually a blood test. And um, to prove, to confirm that you're pregnant or not. So this is the same idea. Does that make sense? Put yes in the comment section if that makes sense to you that this is not meant to be a return to work, a travel thing. This is really meant to be just like a pregnancy test, something you do at home, peace of mind, test your friends and your family members. Um, and that's the idea behind this rapid test because this is how we get through it. So I'm sitting here thinking about it and I'm going, you know, do I really want to do this? Do I want to take on the liability? And, and I kind of went, if I'm not going to fucking do it, who's going to do it, right? If I'm not going to do it, who's going to do it? If I don't educate you, if I don't create the website, the videos, the stuff, the education, how are we going to get over this, right? How are we going to, to really help each other? How are we going to get to this new normal? How are we going to do what we need to do, right? How, do we, how are we going to get back to normalcy, right? We, 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 it makes total sense, right? There you go. makes sense. This is how it works, right? So um, Friday, I'm going to... I'm going to um, put this up on my website. I'll open up my 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 uh, website. If you want it, you can check it out. Um, if not, then fuck off. I don't really care. You know, you can you can do all your conspiracy theories you want. You can do whatever you want to do. I gave you, you know, the tips. What I do: the masks, the gels, the hand washing. Um, but honestly, the answer, if you want a life where you can see grandma and grandpa and grandbabies and travel and do that sort of stuff, you'll need, we will need rapid tests. And by the way, the Abbott test, that's the $5 Abbott test. First of all, it's not going to be $5. That's fake news. And it's still a nasal test. It's still a, you still going to have to shove it up your nose far enough to get a positive, um, to get a positive result. Right to get an accurate result. So these, I'm trying to shoot. People ask about cost. It's going to be about a hundred dollars a test, but you get the results at home. You don't have to send it into a lab. Oh, in fact, here's my friend's test. This is an older model that I was using, and it's not older. It's a different model, but they they took it off the EUA because it's made in China, and that's a purely political. Because this is a really good test. But here's my friend's test. It was, um, she had it exposed, but she's not currently active. That's what that means. This will be a similar, I mean, it, it reads the same way. You don't send it into a lab. You get the results there at home, 10, 15 minutes. I'll have a website explaining everything. I'll have videos. Um, this will come with a printout of what to do. Um, so there you go. That's how I stay safe. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope you'll check it out. I'll open it up on Friday. Um, yeah, there you go. I'll spend the higher cost of voice shoving it up my nose. Um, that's exactly right. 30% false positive rate. Yep. Uh, it will, uh, how many can you buy at a time? 
So um, if you want to be a distributor, you can buy up to 40 at a time. I have it in packs of two, which will be 250. Packs of five will be 500. Packs of 10. The more you buy, the cheaper, right? I can drop it down. Um, packs of 10, packs of 15 is as low as I think 75 a test is pack of uh, pack of uh, 15, right? Um, so that's the idea. Let's see, imagine you drive one day to see your girlfriend, then oh shit, pause. <laughs> Could happen. I have to explain that too. Um, I would. Fake news, man. They just re-reported re the numbers. It's okay. Uh, nurse home for my aunt's funeral. I'm scared for her now. Got to be careful. Got to get her tested. That's testing is the testing is the ski is the T. You know is the key. Sounds like a scam. Whatever. Rock on, man. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. Um, I tested my whole family. This is what I'm doing. Um, you don't have to be part of it. You're probably Russian anyway. Um, Hundred dollars is cheaper than two of my strength training sessions. That's right. Um, hey man, there's there's this line that says you can have it. There's a uh, fast. There's fast, good, and cheap. You fast, good, and cheap. You get two out of the three. You get two out of three. Fast, good, and cheap. Two out of the three. Pick your two out of the three. So. Fast and good, which is this test, will not be cheap, but I will tell you 100 bucks is cheap for what I get out of it. Um, good, but good and cheap will not be fast, right? Uh, fast and cheap will not be good. That's like your last date. That's your last Tinder date. Fast and cheap was not very good. So, you want good and fast, it's going to cost. You want, so Farah talked about training sessions. If you hire a good trainer for fast results, I promise you she will not be cheap. She will not be cheap. All right. So that's just the way the world works. That's how economics works. And that's just where we are. But for me, trying to get this down to you guys for $100, you're not, okay, so let me address that again. How much do you get paid an hour? Right. Let's say you get paid twenty dollars an hour. You just sat in your car for six hours. That's one hundred and twenty bucks you would just wasted when you could have been working. The stick shoved up your nose for this nasal swab. Now you're having to wait ten days for you know anything more than three days is a useless test. CVS has a ten day wait. We got bad as bad as fourteen days. So they're useless. Those tests are useless. So not only did you waste your time right? Doctor's appointment, whatever. Um, yeah, you get what you pay for. That's, that's what it is. Uh, Stephanie is absolutely right. A hundred dollars is cheap for this. Um, the website's not quite ready. It will be a uh, rapid COVID home test, rapid COVID home test.com. But, um, I, I don't have it yet. Yep. Fast and convenient. That's the idea. All right. I got to run. Thank you guys very much for your time and patience, and I hope you'll check it out. Uh, also, check out my weight loss challenge, weightlosschallenge.com. Sign up for that. I'll come back on later this evening and talk more about my weightlosschallenge.com. But I appreciate you guys. hope this was helpful. Please hit share if these tips were helpful. Thanks. Bye, guys.